What's up everybody? Welcome to Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Today we have this Jeep Patriot in the shop because the owner of it just got back from a trip from Colorado. And as you can see, the car is covered in dirt, clay, road salt, and we want to show you guys how to properly remove that. But before we do that, we're going to start by cleaning the wheels, which are obviously the dirtiest areas because not only do you get the dirt from the road, snow, rain, anything that collects on the surface, but you also get tar, you get grease, and brake dust. So let's get started by rinsing them down and then showing you guys the proper steps of scrubbing it so you don't scratch your painted surfaces. Like I mentioned, we're going to start by cleaning the wheels. So over here, this is one of the dirtier wheels on the vehicle, but as you can see, it's covered in dirt. You've got brake dust and all kinds of road grime that are clinging to the surface. So what we're going to do is start by gently rinsing it down to knock down the heavier stuff. We're also going to clean out the wheel well, and I'll show you how to kind of scrub that away without giving too much of an aggressive clean. And then we're going to move on to the actual detailing process. So as you guys can see already, the loose stuff, it came off with no problem because the water is heavier and it helps to kind of drag it off the surface. But as the wheel is drying, you can see that the dirt is still hiding underneath there. And this is what you need to scrub away. Because a lot of guys say that you can just pressure wash it away and then it's done. But in reality, all that's doing is it makes it look clean for the moment, but it's only going to drag away the heavier stuff. But the stuff that's actually embedded in the pores or it's clinging to the surface, it needs to be scrubbed away. And that's what we're gonna show you how to do here. I'm gonna start by using our bucket brush filled with clean water and I've already set my brushes in there to help them kind of soften their bristles but there's already a dirt trap in the bottom and that's going to help obviously trap the dirt and debris that we pull off the surface to help it from returning back. Now we're also going to use a little bit of Diablo wheel gel just a couple ounces and then we'll activate it using the hose And what this does is it adds lubrication as we're washing so that we're not scratching. Because this has a gloss black finish, which I know a lot of you guys have on your own vehicles or gloss in general, but this is going to help us prevent from scratching the surface. I'm gonna start by spraying down with some Signature Sears wheel cleaner. It's safe for all kinds of wheel finishes, but this helps to really cut through the stubborn grease or grime that you may have accumulated. And again, this is safe for any kind of wheel finishes, whether it's painted or OEM chrome or gloss, and you can also use it to clean off old dressings from your tires. And while that's doing its job, we're also going to use some diluted orange degreaser to help clean out the wheel wells because it has, again, it's got clay or grime or road salt, because like I said, this car is from Colorado, and you all know it snows out there and it rains a lot, so try to de-ice the road with road salt, but that's also very corrosive. If you leave it in here for too long, it'll start eating with the finish or dirt a lot. If it gets compacted, that's what causes rust because it'll hide in the crevices of the vehicle and then it gets wet and then it stays wet. So it's a good idea to clean it out as soon as possible or at least as often as necessary. So I'll go back to the wheel and we'll start by doing the major cleaning using a red rocket brush. This has a very soft bristle, but it's got a bendable shape, but it's also very long. So it goes all the way to the back of the wheel start right here at the highest point. This is going to go all the way to the back of the barrel of the wheel. And I'm not giving it a heavy hand or scrubbing really hard, just letting the cleaner do its job. And the foam is going to lubricate the brush so we're not scratching as we clean. And also since it's flexible, it works really well for getting in between the rotor or the drum of your car in between the barrel of the wheel. This way, again, as you look through, you see a completely clean and detailed wheel. But with the design of this wheel, it makes it very easy to get in between the surface of the wheel and also the drum, get behind the spoke, and just continue detailing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, boys. It is cold today. So the red rocket brush takes care of the intricate areas such as the spokes or getting all the way to the back of the wheel, but to do the face now we're going to use a green flag tip brush. This is a soft bristle again that helps to gently carry abrasive particles off of the surface such as your mud or grease or grime 
and it's also going to help trap it inside of there. But as you're cleaning, you want to come back to your bucket periodically, which has the dirt trap, and scrub it against the face so that we're not bringing it back to the wheel. Soft nylon bristles and a plastic ferrule or a plastic handle, which helps to reduce the chances of harming the finish of your wheel. A lot of people are clumsy, I'm not going to admit that I'm not, but uh, as you're working it's just reassurance that you're not going to hurt the vehicle or the wheel. That's why it's made out of a softer material. Now we just want to detail out the smaller areas like the logo and also in between the lug nuts and the crevices that you may have missed with the bigger brushes using a boar's hair brush, just the best detailing brush. And again, same procedure, letting the cleaner do most of the work and you're just helping it agitate. This will gently remove any kind of debris or messes for the best finish. Also around the valve stem. This also works great for detailing up your calipers. Get between the crevices. And then finally the last step is we're going to clean the tire just to make sure that there's no remaining dressings or any kind of accumulated road grease or tar. This way now the whole wheel will look completely fresh. And to do that we're going to use our nifty brush starting at the top scrubbing away any old dressing. You can see it's turning brown. This is all the grease from the road or oily dressings coming off the surface. Get some more cleaning power on there. And this not only makes it look better, but this is also going to make it easier for new dressings to stick to the surface because now you're not locking in any old junk and grime. It's going to have a fresh bare surface to cling to. And then just to finish off this wheel well, we're going to use the green flag tip brush one more time. We're going to scrub away any of the grime that was stuck on the wheel liner, or the wheel well liner. This brush also comes in a long handle version if you guys don't want to get your hands dirty. This makes it easier to manipulate and get into the tighter wheel wells because although this is a fairly dirty wheel well, it's also very easy to access. A lot of cars have bigger wheels or the gap between here is a lot smaller, so maybe a little more difficult on your own personal vehicle. Look at all that crap. So now all it's left to do is we just need to rinse it down and then we've got three more wheels to do and then we can move on to the body. So guys, we just finished cleaning off the wheels and the wheel wells and now it's time to move on to the body. But before we do that, we're gonna set up our buckets, which we have two buckets full of clean water. And we're gonna place a dirt trap in each one of our buckets. And again, what this is going to do is it removes or reduces the chances of dirt from coming from the vehicle and coming back to your car. So it gets trapped underneath the platform and then it's going to be stuck there until the end of the wash process. And now while we're at it, we're also going to use some tough mudder because as you see, this car has some tough grease, some tough dirt, and also some tough mud. So just a couple ounces of this, and we'll also fill up our foam cannon. The Torx Snow Foamer is a great option if you're using an electric pressure washer or a gas pressure washer. Attach the top. Mix the solution back together. And I'll move on to rinsing it using our pressure washer, starting at the top and then working our way down, working in layers to make sure that we get all the dirt that's on the surface off the vehicle or as much of the loose dirt as possible, since we're not trapping it in our wash mitt or again dragging across the surface where it could scratch it. So let's get started. <music> Now we're moving on to the actual washing process and I've chosen to use the three-way wash mitt which means we have one side with the chenille microfiber dreads, 
a bug scraper, and then a smoother side, which helps you really scrub away any of the stubborn stuff. So we're gonna grab some foam. We're gonna start at the highest point using linear motions to ensure that we don't add any swirls because I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, but that, what that is is a swirl means you've got swirl or circular scratches and that's very noticeable and it's also very difficult to polish out. So if you should pick up something abrasive and scratch the surface, it's a lot easier to remove a straight line scratch as opposed to a swirl. Swirl, squirrel, squirrel. Now that the vehicle is all rinsed down, we've gotten rid of all the spent product, the spent soap, and all as well as all that dirt, it's time to dry it. So there's a few options you have. You can either air dry it using some form of a blower, or you can use a very plush microfiber towel, which is what we're gonna use, using either the plot method or just simply dragging it across the surface. But again, you wanna avoid using any kind of circular motions because the edge of a towel or the tag of the towel could scratch it, which is why we recommend removing the edge or removing the tag. This way you don't have any kind of chances of harming the vehicle. But in the meantime, you guys can check out these products on our website, chemicalguys.com. If you like today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop your comments down below for future videos. Be sure to stay tuned for next time. We're gonna show you how to properly protect this ride, where we're going to inspect it, whether it needs a clay, maybe a polish, but we're going to definitely dress the undercarriage, as well as address some other things around the vehicle that needs some attention and some love. So we'll see you guys next time right here in the detail garage.